thanks for joining me today and in this video we're going to talk about Google Forms. In the past year there have been a lot of changes to Google Forms so I thought I would update my video on Forms to help people understand some of the new features that are available. Now this video is going to focus on some of the things that are available to teachers that are part of Google Apps for Education. So some things might differ if you're using a free account with Google. First thing you're going to want to do to create a Google Form is go to Google Drive at drive.google.com and once you're there just click on the new button and at the bottom you'll see more and then you can choose Google Forms. Now for those of you that don't know what Google Forms are, Google Forms are a great way to collect responses from surveys that you give to people or maybe even to collect answers to quiz questions or test questions. You can use a Google Form as a quiz tool and I actually have another video on using Google Forms as an assessment tool so you'll have to check that one out. But for the most part it's just a way that you can create your own document, send it out there through a link to the user that's going to fill it out and then collect responses in a Google Sheet. We'll get to that part in just a second. But here you can see the basic form page. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my form and I'm going to call this demo form so I can get rid of it later actually. And you'll notice that the first thing it does when you rename your form is it puts that as your form title. So if you don't like that then make sure that you name your form whatever you want your form or survey title to be. Then the next thing that's available is a question title. That's They give you an example of a question to start off with right off the bat. Now a few things to keep in mind with questions if you're using a, a, a Google Form as an assessment tool you'll want to make sure that you're using the right question and there are a couple of different options that you have here. You have text which is great for short answer. You have paragraph text which is great for essay but then you also have things like multiple choice, check boxes, and choose from a list and so on and so forth. So if you're using a, a form as an assessment tool you'll actually want your first question to be a way to collect names. So I'm going to call this one name and then change it to text so that they can enter their name in by text and I'm going to make this a required question meaning that they cannot submit the form until they answer this question. Then I'm going to add another item and like since I'm using this as an assessment tool I'm going to go ahead and put the hour that they're in and they can choose from a list if they want to and I'll just put period one, period two and that'll give them something to choose from and make that one a required question as well. Now from here I could go on and start building questions uh, but I will tell you that one thing you can do if you're a Google Apps for Education user is that you can have the form automatically collect the username of the user when they log in and fill out the form. And you can also require them to log in to use the form. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to pull up a, a Google Apps form. So as you can see from this form, this is from my Google Apps for Education account. I've got this box checked that requires them to be logged into their school account and I can also check to automatically collect the respondents username. So those are a couple of options for Google Apps for Education users. But beyond that, with a free account on Google, you can still allow only one response per person requiring them to log in and that keeps you from having to worry about students taking tests for other students. And you can also shuffle question order but I would not do that if you're going to add images to your form because what happens is in order to add an image to a question you have to create it as a separate item on the page and then once you shuffle question order there's no guarantee that the image will actually show up with the question when the form is deployed. So I usually leave that one turned off and then if I'm going to add a multiple choice question I will shuffle the multiple choice options. That's an option in, under the advanced settings for a multiple choice question is to shuffle the option order. Another key thing to remember when you're using forms for an assessment is that if you have a paper test that you've already used for class with multiple choice options you don't want to have to drag and drop or copy and paste each separate one in there 
including the question. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to get around that. So over here on this tab, I have a math test and I want to copy this question. So I'll go ahead and copy that now. I'm gonna go over here and paste that into the question title. But then I want to gather all of these responses at once so I don't have to copy each individual one. So I'll copy all of the ABCD responses, go over to the demo form, and in option one, I'm going to paste that there, and it automatically fills out B, C, and D for me. So that's a, a quick workaround if you're working with a lot of multiple choice questions from a, a test that you've previously used in the past. Now, each time it uses this question, I've optioned to shuffle the option order. So I might want to take out the A, B, C, D portion. And I can do that here as well. And that way it won't be confusing to the student. Um, and then one other thing I'll point out is that you'll notice that as we've been going, there's actually no way to check one of these right or wrong. So from the outset, a Google form is not intended to grade an assessment. It can be used as an assessment, but if you want to have it automatically graded, you'll need to use a third party tool such as Flubberoo. So you might want to watch my other video on using Google forms as an assessment tool to see how that's done. Right now, we're gonna leave the form as it is, and I'm gonna show you a couple of other things that are new to Google Forms within the last few months. One is that if you go to the top of the page, you can click on Change Theme, and you can see what your form looks like if it's deployed to the user, but you also have the option of choosing from one of these themes over here on the far right. If you wanna use a theme, just click on it, or if you wanna to go to the top, and choose a basic theme and then customize it how you want. You can add your own header image. Um, you can change the title and the description and the font styles. Add a little artwork to your page background and do it any way you want to. Right now I'm gonna leave a basic theme on here and then that looks good enough to use. Now, if you're ready to deploy your form, you can go to the top right of the page and click Send Form and they give you a nice web address that you can use or if you want to shorten that so that you can write it on the board at the front of the room for kids that are going to type it into their mobile device you can use the short URL option and then copy that web address and then you can either paste your web address into a website or Google Classroom or some other tool that you might be using for your digital classroom the other option that you have is to click embed and you can get an embed code and if you know a little bit about HTML, you can paste the embed code into your website so that it appears directly on the page. Let me show you really quick what that looks like. So let's say for instance you have a Google site that you're using for your classroom. I'm gonna go over to my Google site demo page. This is just a simple page that I've set up on a Google site. And if you're interested in using Google Sites, just go to sites.google.com. It's another free feature that you have as a Google user. And I'm going to click the edit page button at the top and I'm going to click the HTML source code button and this takes me to a screen where I can drop my code in to my page. Now I'm going to be honest sometimes you might be on a page where you've already got other things on the page so if you're not familiar with HTML there's a there's a simple trick that you can use to find the exact spot where you want to put your your code so let me show you what that looks like as well let's say for instance I've already got a lot of artwork on this page but I want to make sure I'm dropping my code in the right spot I put my cursor where I want it and I just type a word like frog on the page then when I click the HTML code button I can find that word in my code highlight it and then drop my form code right on top of that click update and then save my page now that we've done this here's our form it appears directly on my web page so that users can just go to my teacher website fill out the form and be on their way they don't have to type in any specific address or chain of characters that's difficult to remember so that gives you a quick run through on how to set up your form and how to send your form out. The last thing is, what do you do with your form responses or where are they? 
If you click the View Responses button, Google will open up the Google Sheet where your responses are collected. So for, these, for this question, for this survey or test that I've created, I can see that no one has filled it out yet. So if I want to see what that looks like, let's go back and I'll go to my demo page and I'll fill it out and submit it. And you'll see that when I go back to my form responses page, it has instantly gathered that information and it's ready for me to use. That's a quick rundown on how to create a form. If you have questions, please let me know. And if you're curious about using it as an assessment tool, check out my next video. Thanks.